Hello, welcome to episode 108 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 20th of March. So welcome everybody, I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making in the last seven days. So today we have some knitting, some crochet, a little bit of sewing, some sort of dressmaking where I'm going to talk about things that I have want to make, and um, some confessions, <laughs> and some information on my shop update at the very end of the podcast. So you can find me on Instagram, Ravelry and Facebook as Craft House Magic. I have my own website, crafthousemagic.co.uk, um, where you can find show notes for the podcast, but also my shop where I sell my hand-dyed yarn, handmade project bags, stitch markers and higher higher knitting needles. So we have a few make-alongs going on at the moment. So in the Ravelry group, we have the Retro Mal, which is all things retro and any technique you can think of. If you're using any of my hand-dyed yarns, those are all fitting into the retro theme because they're generally 80s and 90s songs, so you can come and join in with those. But any tenuous link for any project that's old and it's been on the needles a long time, um, anything any sort of link really I'd love to hear how you're linking it into the retro theme um, so my lovely friend Susan has actually sent us some yarn so that I can use those as prizes as well so she sent these three lovely skeins and this one here hasn't got a label but it is very 90s themed with the neons there look at those colors um, so that's going to be a prize. It looks like an Aran weight to me, even though there's no um, label, but it is a very, very soft yarn. I would think it's like a silk mix, that one. So that would be, that would make a lovely soft cowl or something like that. Um, and then these other two are in the colourway between the cracks and they're dye candy yarn. And there's some lovely speckly bits there with then it's a really chunky yarn it's called the workhorse chunky base um so those two t will go to a lucky winner as well so thank you susan so I am also doing a joint um, knit along with lovely Becky from the Back to Blighty podcast. We are both hosting the What A Lot of Pottercal and it's basically any knitting project from this book and they're all lovely Harry Potter themed um, projects. There's so many lovely things here I'd like to knit but I have started um, on a scarf which I shall show you a little bit later on. Um, if you want to join in the discussion thread, that's in my Ravelry group, and the finished objects thread is in Becky's Ravelry group, and there are links to Becky's thread in my discussion thread on the Ravelry group as well. But if you are on Instagram, we're also using the hashtag What a Lot of Potical, um, so look out for the projects there. So we did have the Barbara's Day Out booked for the end of this month, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to cancel um, due to the self-imposed self-isolation really to stop the spread of the coronavirus um, but I'm sure we'll all be chatting away on social media and things and as soon as it's all blown over we'll have another meetup um, booked in there probably at Dunstan Hall because it's quite easy for lots of people to get to so Christine from the Sweet Lavender podcast has just released a new hand warmer pattern. Um, so basically they're like fingerless mitts and they've got some beautiful lacy details on the front there. Um, and Christine's kindly donated three copies of her pattern to the podcast. So I'm going to offer those as prizes for the retro mail. So don't forget to join in um, with the discussion thread there because I'll be drawing prizes from the discussion thread. Um, so thank you so much Christine and hopefully I'll have remembered to put a nice picture of your new pattern just up here um, and I've also want to talk about another pattern um, that one of my friends has designed so my friend Amanda who's local to Norfolk has designed a hat pattern called the Finn hat um, and she's designed it and she's putting it for sale on Ravelry and she's actually given all the proceeds to Cancer Research UK so I shall put a picture up here and I will put links to all the patterns I'm mentioning in the show notes if you want to find them or you can just look on Ravelry for the patterns. Um, but this is the Finn hat and all the proceeds will be going to charity. Now Amanda said that she'd give um, three copies of the pattern to the podcast to give away um, to help with sort of advertising um, but I'm going to 
actually give them away on the next podcast because I want to do a giveaway for 10,000 subscribers first as well. So I shall show uh, Amanda's hat pattern just up here and I will show it again next week and and we'll do a giveaway for those three patterns um, that Amanda's donated to the podcast. So the last couple of weeks have just absolutely whizzed by and we've gone well over 10,000 subscribers. So as a thank you, I want to do a giveaway for that. Um, and I'm basically gonna give away my sets one and two of my minis that I've got in the shop. So these are the 12 new colorways that I've just had in the shop. So those will be um, the prize. So also I want you to choose um, your favourite colourway from my website and I should also give you a full skein of that too. So you get 12 20 gram mini skeins and a full skein as the 10,000 subscriber prize. Um, basically all I want you to do is go over to my website and choose which colourway that you like the best so I know which one um, to gift you, um, when you when you're drawn out as a prize and I will do the draw on next week's podcast so watch out for that. So I think we better get into the good stuff. So we've got knitting first and I have a finished object. Look at these. So I finished my Char Char Chevron socks um, that I had on the needles ages ago. But on the last couple of weeks, I just seem to have whizzed by knitting these. So they're a lovely pattern by Sandra Paul from the Cherry Heart podcast. And it's just a beautiful pattern with these lovely chevrons. Um, and you can do them all the way down the foot like I have, or I suppose you could just do them there if you like to, if you don't like to sort of concentrate on any sort of pattern. And I've used my own hand dyed yarn and the colourway that I've used here is Don't Worry Be Happy um, for the main bit of the sock. And then I've got the mini that goes with it is called Shiny Happy People, but you can buy these as a set by looking under the listing Shiny Happy People on my website. And I've chosen the sparkly base for these socks because you can't have too much sparkle. <laughs> Um, but also because I started them because I wanted to knit some socks um, with the Strictly knit along that Ali from Little Drops of Wonderful was hosting and I did actually knit up to the heel flap and then I just forgot about them, got distracted with other things. Uh, but now they're finished off the needles and I've blocked them all nicely. They always look so much neater when they've been blocked, I love it. <laughs> Although I don't always block them when I wash them. Uh, it is nice to block them once nice and flat on the sock blockers. Um, but yeah, like I say, I don't do it all the time when I've just worn socks. Um, but it is nice to keep them all nice and tidy. Anyway, so that's my first finished object. I have some more knitting. So I have my entry to the What A Lot Of Potter Cow, um, which is, like I said, me and Becky from the Back To Blighty podcast and knitting things out of this book. And I have chosen the Wizarding Transportation Scarf. And I shall show you what it's supposed to look like in the book first before I show you what I've attempted. <laughs> um, this is how far I've got so far. So that's how far I've knitted. I think I'd knitted up to the bottom windows on the last podcast that I showed you. Um, and I've just got on to the broom section. I'm halfway up the the um, pole of the broom. Does that make, pole of the broom? Does that, is that even a, a term? <laughs> I'm just working my way up the broom here anyway. And you can see my buses. If you look further down, you can see that my tension wasn't very good just down here, but I think I've worked um, worked it out that I can do it a little bit neater further up here. Um, simply just by looking how my tension was working, I noticed because I'm working with one yarn in my right hand and one yarn in my left hand. So one I'm doing like English method of knitting and then I'm doing continental with my left hand. So as I was working across the work like this, I noticed that my right hand, the tension on the floats was tighter just on this on this hand rather than both. That's why I didn't sort of realise how tight I was working. And I've just made sure that as I was working across that I just leave it a little bit looser when I leave a float from my right hand if that makes sense. Some people did suggest working inside out on this piece and I did try that but because of the the shape of the project because it is a small loop I found it really difficult for some reason so 
I normally knit over my hand like this, um, but I can't do that because it's a small 16 inch circular needle. So I have to knit from the top of the work. And for me, doing that and knitting from the inside just didn't feel right. So I, I switched back to how I was doing it before and it just took a little bit more care on doing my floats on my right hand, if that makes sense. Um, so it's coming along nicely. I think I've got into the swing of it a bit more now. Hopefully that'll knit up a lot quicker. Plus, I was a little bit addicted to crochet this week, which I shall show you in the next section. <laughs> um, but that's how far I've come along. And this is the other side of the work. So you can see I'm using my really cute progress keeper from Otter and Spell. Um, isn't that lovely? Perfect for Harry Potter themed projects. <laughs> and my lovely friend Jo bought that for me. Thank you so much, Jo. Absolutely perfect for this project. Um, I think as well, with colour work, I'm finding more and more that the more you sort of jiggle it about, <laughs> straighten it up it makes you work neater um so i'm working on that principle and hoping that once it's blocked as well that it'll look a lot neater i can definitely see a difference between this bit down here and this bit further up where i've been sort of concentrating more on my tension a little bit so i'm using um my interchangeable higher higher needles and i'm using a 16 inch cable with four inch tips and then they're five millimeters in size i think they're five millimeters let me just check yes five millimeter tips and they're the four inch ones because if you're working in a 16 inch round you wouldn't be able to use the five inch tips which i normally use but um these shorter tips are ideal for um working in the round like this and of course i've got my little pandas I love these little pandas um, just to top your needles to stop my knitting from coming off. Um, I've just restocked these in the shop if you're interested. I do two sort of versions of the pandas, ones that go on the tip of the needles and ones that when you've unscrewed the cables you can actually screw the little pandas into your cable so that you can take your needles and use them on another project if you're starting yet another project like I am usually. <laughs> so there we go. So this is my Harry Potter scarf and the colours I'm using are my own hand dyed yarn and they're in my uh, Aran weight yarn and it's the Merino Aran weight where you get 115 grams um, per skein so you get 190 metres in there um, which is very similar to the meterage of the yarn that it says um, in the pattern itself and the colourways I'm using are Purple Rain for the bus, I've got a grey in the background which is Ordinary World I'm using Walking on Sunshine for the broom so far um, and I'm also picking, I've picked out a blue as well um, which is because the night and, and that's a dark blue there that I'm going to use for some of the later bits. I think it's the platform nine and three quarters bit um, colour work which is the next box which is very exciting. So I am finally getting properly into this um, project and it is very squishy and thick and going to be lovely and Adam has obviously already got his eye on it <laughs> He's, he says he wants it um, to wear especially if we go to the Warner Brothers studios down in Watford again as well so looking forward to seeing some more work done on this actually because I think it's going to be a really nice squishy scarf so there we go that's my knitting actually, all the knitting I've been up to, but I have done quite a bit of crochet, which I'm gonna show you now. So here's the crochet section. I have managed to join all my blocks and I'm really chuffed about this. They took quite a long time to join actually, surprisingly so. Um, so this is the Nature's Walk blanket and the pattern's by Sandra Paul, who's from the Cherry Heart podcast. Um, and I have actually, I've actually used more squares than it said in the pattern. So in the pattern, I think it told you to make 48, um, but I did have a little bit of extra yarn left. So I was very tempted to use it all up and I made 60 squares in total. Um, so then I had to rearrange the blocks from how the pattern said, um, but I was happy to do that. I could lay them all on the floor and design to my heart's content. <laughs> So it's 10 squares this way and six squares that way because that was the sort of easiest way to set out 60 squares and use them all. Um, I think it was something like 
five by six or five by seven the original pattern I don't know I can't remember exactly so it is a little bit bigger than the original pattern but this um, last week I've managed to join all of the squares together um, using a lovely double crochet technique that Sandra has sort of designed I think I've never actually joined squares together with a crochet technique I normally um, stitch them within with a darning needle um, but Sandra has written really fantastic instructions for joining these squares um, in the nature's walk blanket pattern and I'm pretty sure that the joining is free because six of the blocks were free. Um, but then I bought the kit from Black Sheep Wools to get all the lovely colours. So I got an extra six blocks as well. So there was 12 different blocks that I had all together. Um, so, but then I think that the, I know for certain that the six blocks were free and then I just got an extra six because I bought the kit. But I think the, the join in the squares is also part of the free instructions as well. So make sure you go and check out um, Sandra's Nature's Walk blanket pattern because um, I'm pretty sure that well, at least six of the squares are free anyway. So check that out. Very, very pleased with how this, this looks all sort of joined up. Um, it just finishes it off so nicely really pleased with how that looks um and on the outside or oh, not the outside ellie the inside of the blanket this is how it looks um from the inside as well so it looks lovely and neat on both sides really i still prefer the um, little bit of cream between the blocks but i think that that's come out really lovely let's see if i can get most of it in shot <laughs> it's difficult my craft room is not big enough. Let's go behind the, the craft chair. <laughs> Let's see if I can get more in. There we go, that's pretty much all of it. And you can just see that I've started to do, I think I've done three rounds on the outside of the blanket and there's going to be a really nice border as well. So I shall show you my progress on that next week, hopefully. Um, I did get addicted to this and I could not stop crocheting on it. <laughs> Um, and then I thought I must get some knitting done as well so um, the time consuming bit really I think was joining these together and also the first rows um, were shorter crochet stitches around here so once now I've done those and I'm on to the sort of wider stitches without giving away the pattern <laughs> um, now I think it's going to work up quicker. There's going to be a nice lacy bit around here. So I'm excited to see how that looks. So that's my crochet blanket. Um, I've, I've got myself all tangled up now. Oh dear. <laughs> anyway, that's I'm, I'm detangled. It's fine. So I have a little bit of sewing to show you. I've been doing some of my cross stitch. So this is, oh, I should show you the pattern first. So this is a pattern that I picked up from a charity shop actually a few years ago. And I thought, oh, it's absolutely gorgeous. And I did start it a couple of years ago, I think now. <laughs> and that's how I've got on so far. I've just recently done some more work on this little tray bit here. Um, but it's coming along nicely and very, very slowly. I'm hopefully going to try and do actually a little bit of each um, of these little pictures every week rather than just leaving it until I really fancy it. I'll get into the swing of it a bit more, I think. Let's see if I can get it a bit closer. So that's how it looks so far. Um, so you can say, Ellie, have you done that cross stitch yet? <laughs> because I must get some things finished rather than leaving them languishing everywhere. Um, I've got an awful lot of things on the needles and, well, not just on the needles, all different projects that I need to get finished. It's just lots of things to distract me. So that's my cross stitch. But I do have some um, ideas for dressmaking that I wanted to share with you. So last week I hadn't quite finished my indigo top by Tilly and the Buttons. And I've only done a little bit of work on that. So I'm going to save that till next week. Um, but I will be hopefully finishing it this weekend. That would be really nice so I can actually wear it. But there were a couple of patterns that I saw when I was watching uh, vlogs and looking online at different things that I thought, oh, that's quite a good idea. So um, 
talking about Tilly and the Buttons with the indigo top I'm working on, um, I noticed that Tilly and the Buttons had got um, a really good um, blog post that they put up on there. I get emails when they put something new on there and there was a really good one about thread tension, about um, making sure that your bobbin thread is the right way up and lots of little things like that that I think just um, help you have like a checklist of things to try before changing the actual tension of your sewing machine so I think that's something that's um, interesting to look at if you're into sewing um, so I've been watching the kittenish behaviour daily vlogs that she tends to do um, she does lots of dressmaking and if you're interested do give um, kittenish behaviour a watch um, and she shows hundreds of patterns that she's like uh, bought or fancy she does so much dressmaking but I saw this skirt and I thought wow that was amazing and it's the Vogue V1683 skirt and it just had these really cool sort of asymmetric panels and I just thought that that would be fantastic but I was thinking maybe I should go dressy and make it in like a black satin in, so that it is a really statement piece <laughs> not that I have anywhere to go to wear it so maybe I should make a more casual one we shall see and also I need to purchase the pattern as well so but just an idea just a lovely pattern I thought I could share with you guys um, and I also was thinking I actually recently purchased the Hollyoak dress pattern from Crashmere Patterns and it's a, a summery dress with straps here and it's made for ladies with bigger busts <laughs> and tummies <laughs> if you're interested in that but I was thinking I shall pop a picture up here of the actual pattern itself but I was thinking that sort of design like a maxi dress pattern but done in like a, a tropical leafy print and that was mainly um, inspired by Sean from Kittenish Behaviours vlogs as well because she really likes um, leafy prints and I, it's not something I've really focused on before but I think actually that would work really well with a maxi dress for the summer that's if we have a nice summer in the UK <laughs> but I just thought those combination of fabric and pattern would be absolutely lovely and I just thought perhaps you'd be interested to hear about it too so um, tell me what you think or any modifications you think would be interesting for those patterns I'd love to hear what you've got to say so now I have my confession section I've only bought a couple of things <laughs> Actually, one of them was a gift so I'll start with the gift first so it doesn't seem so bad that I've bought more stuff because I seem to have something to show you every week <laughs> so my lovely friend Dawn sent me some beautiful face scrubbies and I just thought these were absolutely lovely I haven't used them yet because <laughs> that would be a bit weird wouldn't it showing you used face scrubbies um, I've got one of my hairs on here as well oh dear um, so these lovely face scrubbies Dawn sent me and I just think actually these are the perfect size um, and they are so so soft as well so thank you so much Dawn um, and she has her own website um, well a Facebook page anyway and it's called Dawn's Crafty Creations and she actually does um, little classes and I think she sells um, sells the actual um, face scrubbies online as well so that's her details there and I'll pop them in the show notes as well so you can find her Facebook page but I am very impressed um, with how well designed these are perfect size just that little bit bigger than the ones I've made before um, and really nice and soft it's a really nice material I especially like this one with some just little blue speckly bits in there it seems to shame to use it it looks like it could be used as a coaster as well Dawn <laughs> thank you so much um and i also made a purchase so in my pocket i've been carrying um my hand bar that's designed by the lonely knitter um and she's now branded it as properly the crafters balm so lonely knitter does a podcast as well and it's laura and she designed these really cute little pots of hand balm um, and I think they're really handy for popping in your pocket and I've got three different sort of flavours I don't think you should call it a flavour fragrance that's the right word 
I've got peppermint, lavender and neutral. So they do come in three different um, smells. Um, I had the neutral one before because she donated some um, to the Suffolk Socks Knitting Retreat and we had a little bag with them in and I've been using it all the time so I thought I'd pick some up from her shop. So originally Laura had launched it as a Kickstarter campaign but now she has her own website and it's craftersbalm.co.uk but I will leave links in the show notes to the products as well. Um, but so far I have had, I've had a sniff of the lavender and peppermint and they smell lovely too. But I just thought that's a genius idea having a really small little packet that you can just pop in your pocket and then most of the time that's the time where I need to put hand balm on um, when I'm out and about um, and you don't think oh I've left my hand cream at home so these are ideal she also does a larger pot as well um, I'm not quite sure how much bigger these are but these for me are the handy ones so I've got three now to keep me going so last is the shop update section um, so if you don't want to watch that bit I shall see you in the next episode but do watch out um, in the interim before the next episode I'm hoping to have a couple of little videos of things like um, all my works in progress a little summary of them <laughs> that I've been hiding away that might be quite interesting I think and maybe a little review on different um, sort of sock yarns that I've used and um, Adam is always wearing his socks so I can use his socks as a bit of an example of which yarns I think uh, are best in terms of commercial yarns so let's get into the last section shop update so I have just updated um, I've just received another order from Higher Higher so I've managed to stock up on quite a lot of my Higher Higher knitting needles. I wasn't able to get any more of the miniature cables, the thinner cables that go with the needles that are between 2mm and 2.5mm but I have plenty of stock of the other cables for the interchangeable ones and everything else is stocked up I think um, but I've also got a new thing. So I decided to stock some really cute little multicoloured bulb pins in the shop. Um, I just thought that they were really cute. Um, it's easier for me to pop a picture up here as well of the actual bulb pins laid out. You get 12 basically in multiple colours so that's always nice to sort of decorate your knitting with. So those will be in the shop and they'll be £2.30. Obviously if you're buying from outside of the UK it should come up with the currency conversion um, on the website um, as you're looking at it. You can select which currency you want it to come up in. So also I've been thinking about advent calendars because um, already people have made them available. Mine aren't going to be available till August later this year um, and then I'll leave the spots open until sort of the end of September and they'll be posted out in October um, for my advents, my hand dyed yarn ones. But I did notice that Julie from Suffolk Socks has already got her opal advent calendars up there. It's 24 opal minis and she's got a discount code as well so I thought I'd give you that one so she's offering 20% off her opal advent calendars um, and, the, and the code is xmas24 2020 um, so I'll put that in the show notes as well as on the screen so you can find that so you'll be all well prepared for next Christmas um, I think that's all I've got to tell you about my shop update. There will be some new bags in the shop next week. Um, I'm excited to have some more new fabrics in the shop. So that will be for next week. Um, but in the meantime, enjoy all your crafty time this week. And I ho do hope um, that the weather's nice so you can go off for some nice walks this weekend as well. So don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. And I shall see you next week. Bye!